Good evening. Welcome to the uh, underground of Mr. Garen's house. We are streaming live from the basement. That's the only safe place when there's a four-year-old running around the house. Today we are going to um, take a look at the United States government. We're starting a very large, very comprehensive unit and in this unit we're going to cover the Articles of Confederation, the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution of the United States of America. We're going to see how our country runs, how the government is supposed to function, and um, learn the history behind what it took to write all of those documents. So, open up your notes to page number two, and let's start looking at the Declaration of Independence. All right, we left off last time with our last unit at the beginning of the American Revolution, and the colonists got extremely upset over the British form of government. They were tired of having a king. They were tired of not having any say in their government because they didn't have any representatives in Parliament. And so um, there was action against the British and then action from the British against the colonists back and forth back and forth and in 1776 after the battles of Lexington and Concord a year earlier the colonists finally stepped up and said we're done we're done being British we are done being um, you know being taken advantage of and being told what to do and being shot in the streets being overtaxed and being unrepresented. Now, the the beginnings of this whole this whole um, <clears throat> uprising came with Thomas Paine's uh, pamphlet called Common Sense. A pamphlet is a small piece a small piece of paper with some words written on it. And uh, Thomas Paine's pamphlet was actually quite lengthy. And throughout the document he argued for American independence. He used phrases like, it, well, the phrase common sense. Everybody should know these are the reasons why we as British colonists must be independent. And so he went through reason after reason. It's only common sense to declare independence, for example, because we're not represented in Parliament. It's only common sense to declare independence because the British have closed our ports. It's only common sense to become Americans instead of British. Most Americans that read this book, they read it and they agreed with it. And so it was a, a, a very influential piece of literature. Now you can see there letter B is the Declaration of Independence. And this is probably, well in my opinion and Mr. Wagner's too, um, the most important document that came from this time period. So on July 4th, 1776, a document was signed by the Second Continental, by the Continental Congress, rather, um, that stated, no longer are these colonies British, these colonies are American. We are a new people. So this document was written by several people, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Ben Franklin, and others. Those three are three of the most uh, influential and powerful of the founding fathers. Um, Jefferson became a president, John Adams was our second president, and Ben Franklin is remembered as the true American. If you want to ask, if you ask somebody what is an American, start telling Ben Franklin's life story. That's an American. Uh, so, it was issued by the Second Continental Congress in July of 1776. Issued means released, it goes into law. And so what it did was it declared our independence from England, from Great Britain, and it created the United States of America. Its purpose was to break the ties, and it, it states the purpose of this document is to break away from England. Um, it talks about the purpose of government, and that those purposes are to protect the rights and liberties of the people. And these aren't just rights and liberties that we fight for, but that people are given by God or by a higher power, by providence. Um, also, it talked about this radical, crazy idea that 
is that says the power of the government comes from the people. That's very different than what most people believed um, in this time. Most people said, hey, power comes from the king, and his power comes from God. But now we, this new nation was founded on the idea that power comes from the people. And while it sounds great and lofty, and it was very, very radical for its time, uh, the ideas that were expressed in the Declaration of Independence did not apply to women, slaves, or Indians. Um, it would take another 200 plus years for those, for all of the rights and liberties um, written about in the Declaration and signed into law and then created in the Constitution uh, to come to pass for them to spread. Here is a section of the Declaration of Independence and read along with me in your packet as I read it from the screen. And before we start, let's I'll point out these guys here. This on the right, this is Thomas Jefferson. And you can see, I believe this is John Adams here, old, angry, balding. Ben Franklin, his round face you can always recognize. I would say Jefferson is probably this guy here. He's pointing to the map, America, on there. He's pointing to all of his books. He's got the pen in his hand, see? He the, was the main writer, and he's saying, yes, uh, this is a good work. I'm Thomas Jefferson, and I think this is awesome. So, let's read this together. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, and that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government. So take a moment and underline those bolded words in your packet. Underline them because they're going to come back and they're, they're going to be used quite often through this unit. And we're going to wonder, hey, this country that we have, does our country um, follow the Declaration of Independence? Do we still believe all of this? Um, is what Jefferson wrote hundreds of years ago, is it still important to us today? And uh, this will bring us into our next section of the unit which will be the history of the U.S. Constitution, starting with the Articles of Confederation.